Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to all the participants for this workshop organized by the Department of Economics, Carmel College for Women on vegetable gardening, how to get started in any space, small or large, to be conducted by Ms. Lisa Pinheiro. Students, faculty, and others, it's a great pleasure to have you all. On behalf of the Department of Economics and my faculty colleagues, I once again welcome you all. I request all the participants now to kindly mute your audio and video as we now begin with a short prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of grace, we come to you in gratitude today, giving thanks for fellowship and friendship. May your goodness and love be present amongst us today. Come bless our gathering with unity, hope, and vision. Only you truly know what we are setting out to accomplish. Strengthen our confidence in what you have made us to be. Set us free from comparison in order to work together efficiently. We thank you, Lord, for the participants of this event. Bless their families and keep them safe. We thank you for each mind and heart that fills the presence of this workshop. Bless the efforts of our hands, the bonds between us, and the influence of our work. Lord, as we plan and share together now, may you guide us by your Holy Spirit and lead us into all truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mary, in beauty of Carmel, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I request our Vice Principal, Dr. Sister Maria Lizen AC, to kindly address the participants. Sister Lizen, over to you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Am I am I audible? Okay. Fine. Yes. Sir. Good morning, one and all present, especially our students who are present there. It's it's really a very bright morning, I can say, and a very um, good time, I can say, appropriately that we can. Uh, before I start Start off. I would like to thank the economic departments for the initiative taken by them to have this webinar on how to, and more so, I would say, during this time of pandemic. So growing your own vegetables, I think, is both fun and rewarding. And that's what I have realized, because I have a small plot where I grow some vegetable. And it's really both rewarding and fun. Feed the soil is like a mantra for organic gardeners and with good reason. And why should this be? Of course, more will be dealt by Lisa, the resource person for the day. But I think fresh vegetables are a central part of a healthy diet with a healthy body and a healthy mind. Because they come loaded with essential nutrients that promote better health, Antioxidant included and vitamins. That should be our daily meals to boost our health and our loved ones. Gardening, I can say, is inherently eco-friendly. 
because it means sparing the earth of water, soil, and air pollution, and enjoying the earth's bounty without harming the environment. Yes, one of the most important benefits I can say of growing our own vegetable is it keeps us fit. Most of us want to work out, but not of all, all of us feel comfortable in maybe going to the gym or lifting weights and so on. But I can say gardening is a wonderful hobby for anyone who would like to achieve a dream and a healthy physique. All the weeding that we have to do, the planting, the watering, the harvesting, they all tone up the muscles and build strength. And so if you don't like to go to the gym or do some lay, lift weighting, I think gardening is a best exercise that can nourish our body and, of course, nourish our souls too. Again, I would say, if you are stressed out, then there is no need to go outside maybe to de-stress ourselves. Gardening can do it because... When you are in the midst of plants, a lot of oxygen is given out and that can be a very great stress reliever because of the fresh air and sunshine which can soothe our frenzied nerves. A lot of people dream of having a huge vegetable garden but I would like to say we could start with something small whether it's a container or even maybe a raised bed give the garden time to grow plant only what we want to eat and plant that that can easily grow that don't need much of our energy and time but make sure maintenance of the garden is also equally important water source is another important aspect that you need to uh, see to so see where there is water source for you that becomes easy and I'm sure the resource person, Lisa Pinero, will elaborate more on this very important topic, especially the need of a vegetable garden during this time of COVID-19 pandemic, when there are difficulties maybe to get vegetables from outside with the fear of contracting the disease now that we know it is um, community transmission. So having your own garden, and students, now that you don't have to travel to the college, you have some time in your hands, having a vegetable garden would be very beneficial. So I wish you all the best for this uh, webinar. Make the best use of all the tips that will be given to you by the resource person. And by the end of this month, I would like to see a photo of your vegetable garden where the plants must have grown at least to five inches. All the best and good. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sister Lizen. Our principal, Dr. Aldina Braganza, has conveyed her greetings and best wishes to all, as she could not be present here with us uh, due to some urgent work. Ms. Lisa Pinheiro is like a breath of fresh air in the agriculture scene of Goa. Refreshingly different and markedly talented, Lisa is a good role model for her generation of young Goans. She was a panelist at the webinar on Goan agriculture held recently at Kamal College, and it's a pleasure to have her again as resource person for this workshop. In order to formally introduce her to our participants, I call upon my colleague, Ms. Rivia Dias, to do the honors. Ms. Lisa Pinero, a graduate in agriculture from Don Bosco College of Agriculture, Sulkorna, is a multi-talented youngster with singing, acting, and dancing skills along with an enthusiastic passion for agriculture and kitchen gardening. She is currently engaged in developing kitchen gardens, especially for people having small spaces in urban areas. She has made a mark as a budding agriculturist and conducts field demonstrations, training and awareness programs on different aspects of agriculture. 
She is a member of Agricos Alumni Association and has conducted a webinar on solanaceous veggies and cucurbits and has anchored the webinar on Kuragar system organized by the Agricos Alumni Association in collaboration with the Botanical Society, Botanical Society of Goa. Lisa is a sports enthusiast too and is a captain come coach of Tenicoid. We welcome you, Lisa, to this workshop and I request you now to take over. Carmel College and Department of Economics acknowledges the presence of Mr. Miguel Braganza, teacher and mentor. Welcome, Sir Miguel. It's a delight to have you once again with us. Lisa, over to you. I would like to also thank the economic department for giving me this opportunity to teach you all on how to start a kitchen garden. So we'll begin. You are lucky enough if you have a large space and a lot of space to grow kitchen garden. And even if you do not have space, you are still, still lucky. And I'll show you how to begin. So the first important thing when you have large space is the first thing when you want to start a kitchen garden is preparing the land. So I cannot explain you on a large scale. I'll be showing you how to start in a small scale. So if you do not have land, you can also grow it in the pots. I'll show you how to make a potting mix now. I'm using a planter rectangular which has holes. Now these holes are mostly for the drainage purpose. If there's excess water, the water will leach out from these holes. The second step is we're going to put some gravel or stones inside to prevent soil from getting eroded. Instead of stones, you can also add chunks of uh, coconut husk, which also saves, serves the same purpose. So cover the holes nicely. Next, we are going to prepare a basic potting mix. So like how plants have different soil conditions, the pot should be also different, the potting mix should be also different. For vegetables, it is different. For fruits, it is different. For succulents, it is different. Now, the basic potting mix consists of three parts of cocoa pit, two parts of soil, and one part of compost. This is a basic potting mix. You can also, instead of compost, you can add FYM, bone meal, or other manures, normal compost, even farmyard manure, or any other organic matter in the soil. Now, you got to mix this together nicely. This way. The purpose of adding cocoa pit is that it allows good soil aeration. So your plants will get good air circulation, the roots will not get diseases and it will provide a nice medium for the roots to grow. Mix it nicely.
See that the compost, soil, and cocoa bit gets mixed evenly. So I'm adding three parts of cocoa bit because it makes the soil porous as well. Second layer should be of this potting mixture in the pot. Look how porous the soil is. Cocoa pit does not contain any nutrients, but it is just to prevent, uh, prevent soil from getting compacted. So I prefer cocoa pit because it prevents my soil from getting sticky and hard. Goan laterite soil is quite rocky. And that's why you cannot grow leafy green. So cocoa peat provides a good medium if you add it to it. You can also add trichoderma in this mixture at least a teaspoon of it mixed in little water. Now trichoderma will prevent soil borne diseases for your plants. Since the pot is nicely covered, so in shallow pots like this, you can grow herbs or leafy vegetables like coriander, uh, then uh, spinach, fenugreek, uh, tamri bhaji, etc. Deeper pots will de definitely prefer uh, growing chilies, tomatoes, brinjal, okra. So these plants, you can harvest these leafy greens within a month. So I'm adding spinach seeds now. So it is important to maintain a distance between each plant because if you sow randomly, you are going to create a crowded environment and this will lead to diseases and they won't get proper air or sunlight or nutrients. That's why maintaining a distance is important. So I am planting each seed, making holes at least 15 centimeters apart. I'm making hole at least 15 centimeters apart and an inch deep and placing two seeds in each. Now cover it slightly with the soil. And give it a sprinkle of water. Now spinach will germinate in about 4 to 5 days and you can harvest it within a month. So spinach requires not partial sun. So if you place the pot where it receives at least about six hours of direct sun, you are going to have a healthy, lush harvest. So if you do not have pots, you can grow in planters like dust bins or paint buckets or tiffins like this. Even grow bags are available which has drainage holes, plastic crates. There are many more options where you can grow vegetables. Now for this tiffin, I have made drilled holes at the base which will serve the same purpose to drain out excess water. I'm adding more gravel. And then the soil again.
you all big stones if there are in your soil now we'll learn how to grow coriander everyone is so fascinated for growing coriander because you can keep them on your window sill and harvest it whenever you require and then you can garnish it on your food so coriander is a fresh herb and can be even grown on your window sill it requires just 4 hours of continuous sunlight to grow nicely it will attain its uh, maximum growth like maturity time within 5 months and you can start picking it from 3 months itself so now coriander these are the coriander seeds now from each seed you are going to get two plants that is one seed has contains two embryos that's why it is important to split it so that we are going to do by taking a paper place the seeds on the paper fold it and gently rub it do not put more pressure because it will crash the seeds and you won't able to get it there are some varieties which is not require splitting because these are good and this uh, this require splitting because these seeds are quite hard and will prevent from getting germinated look how the seeds have splitted now sprinkle these seeds in this container this way cover it with more soil and water see that you do not over water because uh, these are delicate plants sensitive to over watering and will rot so uh, put water as much as the plant requires you can check if it requires water by just poking your index finger in the soil if it's moist it is it is a sign that it does not require water if it's dry then it's a sign that your plants require water your soil requires water you can place them in the sun now raising seedlings is also important in case of in case of uh, chilies brinjals uh, beans and cucumber so i have raised seedlings of bottle gourd what is the bottle gourd these are chilies these are cluster beans peas and okra okra requires that you can directly sow okra or you can transplant it then i have used uh, paper paper pots which are which will act as a seed starter you can also grow sow them in biodegradable seed trays or even paper cups now the best thing about this is you do not have to uproot it when you uproot it you are going to disturb the soil, disturb the roots of this plant and this is going to harm the plant and but the, and the best thing about it is you can directly put this in the soil as time goes by your paper pot will get degraded and decomposed and it will grow nicely now transplanting should be done when the leaf then when the plant seedling is at three leaf stage like this way like these are two germinated leaves and the one true leaf water it nicely and you can keep in the sun so the best time for transplanting seedlings is either in the early in the morning or in the evening 
do not pref I do not prefer to transplant in the afternoons because the temperature is quite hot and and the plant will get dehydrated and won't survive. So you can either transplant it directly by uprooting it from the pots or from the these starter pots and you can do the thing. Now for those who have large space, you don't require to transplant, to do raise seedlings in paper cups. You can directly sow them in, on your land by preparing raised beds. And then you can uproot it when it's at three leaf stage and start transplanting either in the morning or in the evening. So we have done, we are done with sowing and transplanting. We are going to see how manuring is done. So how we require food, plants require food as well. So you need to give constant food for the plants. There are different manures which are available. I mostly prefer going for organic because if we grow or, uh, chemically at home, then what would be the difference between buying from the market and growing, from, growing at home? So that's why healthy, organic, fresh food is important when you're growing at home. So there are two types of manuring. One is by true irrigation, that is by uh, true water. The other one is by just applying the powder or the manure in the root zone. For example, I have this chili plant over here, which is already fruiting. Now, if you have, gro we have grown any plants in, uh, in on the land, so this is the way to apply manure. You need to dig out the soil around it, you need to loosen it. and then add a handful of manure around the soil. Now this is a humus. I have done weeding yesterday and got this soil beneath the weeds. Now this, can, this has decayed twigs and leaves. It contains a lot of nu nutrients. It's dark, it's porous and it's nutritious. So you can take handful of it and put around the chili or any plant if you're growing on land. Now since I already got chilies, we'll harvest it now. If you can see, these are Masuri varieties. Now you'll get chilies within five months of sowing. It's this is the best the time to grow chilies, brinjols and cucabits. So start now, it will be really helpful for you. You'll, you'll really enjoy your fruits of hard work. We're going to see the next method of manuring that is by true fertil fertigation, that's true irrigation and fertilization, fertilizer application together as known, is known as fertigation. So I have a bottle, this is a humic acid. So I'm going to put uh, 10 ml of 10 ml of this solution into uh, 15 liters of water and I'm going to pour it directly into the root zone of the plant. This is the second way of putting manures for your plant. Add at least about 10 ml. Mix it nicely. And put it around the tree or the plants. So 
these are two ways of manuring. The third way by ad of adding manure is by spraying. So we'll see that. We'll go at my backyard. So now this is the same organic uh, mixture which I have used. This is a bottle. I have put 2 ml in 1 liter of uh, water and I have mixed it. Now you can spray it on the plants. This should be done either in the morning or in the evening, manuring, fertilize, applying fertilizers or pesticides should be done when the temperature is low. If you do this in when the temperature is high, it's going to disturb its metabolic activity, it's going to disturb the photosynthesis. That's why it is mostly advisable to do manuring and uh, uh, putting pesticides either in the morning or in the evening. You can spray directly on the leaves. So do not throw away waste from your kitchen like food scraps or fish water or meat water. You can utilize this to put as use as a manure for your plants. Now I have fish water which contains a lot of phosphorus and nitrogen. You can put this directly for your plants and this will provide uh, leach out the phosphorus and nitrogen for your plants and will, your plants will absorb it within just a month. You can follow this practice every day. Just pour it in your pots or on the land. Now how to manure, add manure in your pots? You just have to take a rake and loosen the soil around. See that you do not expose of the roots, just slightly loosen the soil. and add manures around it. Now I'm adding FYM. You can add manures once in once in 40 days or in a, in once in a month. The powdered manures. This is enough. You can see how my bush pepper has already started fruiting. We are done with manuring. Now, how to take care in case of pests and diseases? You need to make sure that you do not overcrowd your plants because overcrowding will result in uh, inviting many pests and diseases. It is important to maintain the space, prepare your soil nicely. Uh, this should be porous, it shouldn't be water in a waterlogged condition. And then, neem oil is the best solution for mostly pests. Like, I'll show you an example on how to use neem oil. So, my flat beans are infested with leaf miner. So you might have seen such a spiral appearance on the leaves. Now this is by an insect called as leaf miner. It, uh, it makes tunnel through the leaf tissue. It makes tunnel through the leaf tissue and disturbs the plant photosynthesis. Now you just have to pick it. and spray neem oil. Now that's a neem oil. So you're going to use 5 ml in 1 liter of water plus add 
टू और थ्री पिंचेस ऑफ डिटर्जेंट और डिश वॉशिंग सोप आई ऑलरेडी हैव अ लीटर ऑफ वाटर आई एम एडिंग फाइव एम एल ऑफ इट थ्री पिंचेस ऑफ डिश वॉशिंग सोप और डिटर्जेंट शेक द बॉडल नाइसली visible you can spray you can spray neem oil either in the morning if there is any pest or disease infestation uh, you can spray neem oil either in the morning or evening now neem oil will remain effective only for 8 hours if you use beyond that it is going to lose its effectiveness spray directly on the leaf until it gets drenched completely So there are other ways of preparing a homemade pesticides you can use vinegar mixed in water then you can also use baking soda there are other pesticides organic pesticides which are herbal based available in the market you can even use that so that's it it's quite simple to start kitchen gardening at home if you have any queries you can ask me now by turning on the mic and i hope you get inspired i hope you will definitely get your hands into gardening Thank you, Lisa, for your efforts in demonstrating the technique of vegetable gardening to us in such a lucid manner. We truly appreciate your passion and hard work. Registered participants, kindly note the link to the feedback form is posted in the chat box. Kindly fill it to receive the auto-enabled e-certificate. The forum is now open for discussion. Lisa will take your questions, after which my colleague, Ms. Glancy Borges, will propose the vote of thanks. You can ask your questions to Lisa. हेलो मैम हेलो मैम हाउ कैन वी गेट रीड ऑफ एफिड यू कैन गेट रीड ऑफ एफिड्स बाय स्प्रेइंग नीम ऑयल इटसेल्फ यू कैन यूज 5 एमएल ऑफ नीम ऑयल डाइल्यूट इन 1 लीटर ऑफ वाटर एंड देन ऐड 2 टू 3 ड्रॉप्स ऑफ डिश वॉशिंग सोप एंड स्प्रे इट वंस इन 7 डेज अंटिल द पेस्ट गोस ऑफ और यू कैन यूज रबिंग अल्कोहल व्हिच इज अवेलेबल इन द फार्मेसी dip it in cotton and apply the dip cotton on the places which has affected with aphid okay ma'am 
Actually, ma'am, I have used dishwashing soap. Then uh, using, I have also used mopping chalk, but there's no use of it. You can try, go for neem oil. It is very effective. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, you're welcome. Hello. Yeah, Lisa. Yeah. Uh, Lisa, uh, yeah. Could you just tell me, like, what is the proportion of the soil and the coco peat, and uh, you know, the manure, and what uh, type of manure to be used? Uh, the proportion Organic of coco peat yeah. should be yeah. The, the proportion of coco peat should be always more. It is three uh, parts of coco peat, two parts of soil, and one part of manure. So instead of vermi compost, you can use home homemade manures by using food that is by kitchen waste and food scrapes you can also use farmyard manure bone meal fish meal hearty meal you can also use these manures as well okay so this is again available so in the, the yes market, it is right? available yeah right okay. the ratio is 3 is to 2 is to 1 okay yeah thank you and then one more question i had is you said something about vinegar mixed in water can be also used as a anti pest measure and also baking soda. So if you could just yeah. tell us like, you know, what is the proportion again of vinegar to water and baking soda to water? Uh, baking soda should be at least one teaspoon in a liter of water and can directly spray. And vinegar, uh, 10 ml of vinegar in one liter of water with one or two pinch of dishwashing soap or drops of dishwashing soap and you can directly spray on the leaves or the, wherever the, it is infested. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello, ma'am. I have another query. Uh, yes. Actually, I have grown tomatoes, but it's flowers. Uh, it started blooming, but after some time, they just fall down. I also tickled them, but it's of no use. Uh, is it placed in the sun? Is your tomato receives like continuous yes, sunlight? Ma yes, ma'am. So then if that's the case, you can add a uh, humic acid, which boosts flowering and fruiting. You can, like how I've showed, 2 ml in a liter of water. It is also available in nearby agro dealer shops. You can spray that every 15 days and you you'll see your plants blooming. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Any more queries? Oh, Ma'am, please can you uh, repeat the, the chemicals? Pardon? Uh, Ma'am, can you please repeat, repeat the name of the that uh, that uh, chemical to spray on the tomato plant? Uh, it is organic, so it contains humic acid. So you can ask for humic acid organic uh, solution at any nearby store. Uh, Ease Eco Solution at Borda provides this. So it's organic. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Any more queries? I would like to request Sir Miguel Braganza to give his comments. He, um, Sir Miguel Braganza, uh, most of you know him. He is uh, a passionate agriculturist uh, and um, an expert in the field of organic uh, agriculture. So uh, your comments, please. Thank you, Dr. Rovina. Uh, it's uh, really very nice to see Lisa presenting on how to do kitchen gardening. Uh, she's a youngster, just graduated and doing these things. And I feel it should encourage girls who are in college or even in high secondary to attempt uh, kitchen gardening at home. It's not rocket science. It's something that you learn as you do. And there are many organic solutions. That's the most important part. There are many organic solutions to problems which uh, commercial farmers use uh, chemicals. And if we can grow our vegetables, part of it at least, we can reduce the incidence of uh, cancers, migraine, 
uh, unknown headaches and uh, tumors and all such problems that we have basically because of the pesticides even if they don't use insecticide they will use some herbicide to kill the weeds and that also comes into our food material so the amount we can reduce of these chemicals and the amount we can grow at home will help us to become more self-reliant on our food sources and to live a healthier life. Also, gardening is something very exciting. It's very de-stressing. You can relax doing gardening and it's a good hobby to have, especially in the present day world <coughs> when COVID is a source of tension and worry, uh, when you have worries about careers and about your courses and so many other things and gardening for one hour can be very relaxing so everyone can attempt and you don't have to buy things to do gardening you have a party you have a, a pet bottle of one and a half liter two liters two and a half liters you can just cut it into two halves and make a, a vase out of it or you can make a long vase out of it just by cutting the top, the neck area. And any soil that you have, you can add a little bit of compost, cocoa pit, and there you are ready. It's not that you need uskechi mati or something. And I would encourage more students to do this. It's something I teach also the biotechnology students as a skill enhancement course in the second year. And many of them are doing it. I'm surprised that. Uh, through, we use Google Bit, so it's as good as a webinar that you're attending, and they're able to understand and do things at home. And I hope that you all feel empowered and enabled to do a little bit. Remaining, you will learn along the way. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your valuable tips. You're always an inspiration. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. I would like to thank the de Department of Economics of Kamal College for giving me this opportunity. I know it's been quite difficult, the network issue, it does not synchronize with the video, but still I've made sure you all get the experience, you'll get, you all get to learn about it. And thank you so much for giving me op opportunity. If you have any queries, you can ask me on my Facebook page or Instagram page through Fruits of Hard Work. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa. You were awesome. We really appreciate you. I call upon my colleague, Ms. Glency Borges, to propose the vote of thanks. Yes, thank you, Rovina. Uh, it is a privilege and a great joy for me to extend a vote of thanks on behalf of Department of Economics, Kamal College for Women. Special thanks to our resource person, Ms. Lisa Pinero, for making it convenient to conduct a very interactive, informative, and a demonstrative session on vegetable gardening. She has provided us very valuable tips on preparation of soil manually and also on the use of pesticides. Our gratitude also goes to our principal, Dr. S uh, Aldina Braganza, and also our vice principal, Dr. Sister Lizanne AC, for encouraging and supporting this event. We also appreciate the efforts of our technical experts, Mr. Mariston Dias and Hari Sharma, for their technical expertise to ensure the smooth conduct of this online session. Last, but not the least. Thank you, dear participants, for showing interest in this workshop. I hope you all are motivated enough for vegetable gardening. May your work yield you bountiful fruits and vegetables too. God bless you. Have a nice day.